Today we're going to take a look at what happens when we get guillotine from the bottom of the half guard. This can happen after we have a seatbelt grip, we're propped up to an elbow, maybe we're looking to scoop sweep our partner, and our partner takes that opportunity to wrap our head. Now usually they'll wrap with a head and arm guillotine. Okay, it's not impossible for us to get caught with just the head. We'll take a look at why that's going to be the more, more predominant attack that you're going to face. Most of the guillotine defenses in most other positions involve us fighting our partner's hands to prevent the strangle from happening. We do want to keep in mind the tightness of the grip, but we're going to use a little bit of a different method to start to look to, to handle this position. Okay, so where are we beginning? We're going to begin in the half guard, any sort of half guard where we're on our side, you have our partner's leg trapped, your legs can be crossed, you can have a figure four, it doesn't really matter. And what we would like to do from the bottom is we're usually looking to take an underhook. Now, if you are in, you have a partner who's playing back and you go to seek the underhook here, often it'll involve you propping yourself up onto your elbow. Even if not, and you're looking to dive through, you'll be having to bring your partner, your head close to your partner's body. When this happens here, it's not uncommon for your partner to see an opportunity here to take that top arm, go over the top, and then start to lock up here. Now, if we just relax, for, uh, not relax, but like if we just kind of fall onto our side and try to fight the guillotine, oftentimes what happens is with our hands committed, our partner will tripod a little bit, start to free that knee, and now all of a sudden they're able to either mount and start to finish or pass our half guard, and now we get into problems where our partner's off to our side and we have issues with guillotines and arm triangles. So instead of working strictly to fight the hands here, when we find ourselves in a position like this, we are going to use one hand to monitor our partner's strangle arm, but we're going to leave our seatbelt grip in place. So as he goes to lock up this position, my hand's going to come in, we're going to fall down, but we're going to keep this grip. We're going to switch our legs so that we can take our heel down by our partner's ankle, and we can take their heel outside the line of their knee. We're going to pull this way. Once we're here, we're going to use this grip and this hand, and we're going to start to walk our partner towards uh, the, the strangle arm side here like this. Once we do, even if he keeps this leg based out, go ahead and put your foot up here. Even if he keeps this foot out, it's not going to do very much to stop him from getting swept off in the far direction. We can even, if we feel confident, switch to a scoop grip here. As he goes to strangle, go ahead please, and keep his base, he finds it very, very difficult and in fact, we have the ability to turn and rotate and put our partner down onto their back. Once we're here, we're going to keep our grip, we're going to keep our legs connected to our partner, and we're going to heist up so that we can land in a position where our partner's knees are facing away from us. Now it's just a matter of freeing our leg and moving up to the cross side. Now, we haven't gotten out of the position yet, but when he goes to finish his strangling, he finds it almost impossible. It's very, very difficult. The one thing that he can do is with a lot of power, he could bridge and take me out in this direction, turning me over. So for that reason, if we feel our partner starting to bridge from here, go ahead please, we're gonna sink our weight back and we're gonna cover our partner's hip on the far side. Now, as he goes to squeeze, he finds it very difficult. As he goes to bridge, he finds our weight is back. When we're ready, we can start to slip our near arm out. If he insists on this grip, we're simply gonna lock our hands and we end up in a very tight strangle. Often your partner will let go. And from here, you've dealt with both the guillotine and the fact that you've been on the bottom, you've been able to complete your sweep. Let's look at it from a different angle. So, we're here, bottom half guard. We're working for our underhook. Our partner locks up an arm in guillotine. So we commit to our grip here, and we either control our partner's wrist or we go directly into the scoop position. Either is good. We switch our legs to take our partner's heel to the outside, and then we continue our scoop sweep by walking and taking our partner over in this direction. Now you'll notice he still has the grip. We don't want to be sticking our neck out here in order to make the strangle worse, so we'll be hiding our, uh, our chin a bit. We're going to drive up off of our back leg and tilt so that our partner's going to face away from us. Now from here, it's just a matter of freeing our leg. Once we do so, we can settle into the top position. This hand can cover partner's far side. As he goes to bridge, we sink our weight back. When it's time for us to release, we're going to take this left arm out. If he releases the grip, all the better. If he insists on keeping it here, we have the so-called von Flew choke where we can lock our hands, drive our shoulder forward, and our partner ends up strangling themselves. So it's in this way that we can manage the, the uh, guillotine, arm and guillotine, from the bottom of half guard. We don't want to commit both of our hands to the strangle and allow our partner to pass. So instead, we're going to keep the good connection that we have, we're going to defend the neck with what we can, and then we're going to focus on reversing our partner. If you can land on top, 
especially with your partner's knees turned away from you and then eventually to the cross side, it's gonna be very, very difficult for your partner to finish you from the guillotine. So you kind of get a two for one situation. You've defended the guillotine and you've swept your partner, you've landed on top and you're good to go. All right, hopefully this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching, see you soon.